Shark Nation, what is good? How y'all feeling? And welcome back, man. I am IC33000 to be exact. And listen, we are getting into episode three of season three. And I know what you want to say. I know what's going on, man. It's been a little minute, but hey, we are right back in it. All right, man. So look, the last game we faced off against UNLV at home, man. This was a season opener. We had high expectations for this game, high expectations for this season. And we look really good starting out for this game, man. We were making big time plays all over the field. Some of our star guys getting involved, man. But towards the end of that game, we just got a little bit sloppy and could not hold on to the lead we had. UNLV ended up coming back and winning this game. It was a shootout, but they got the final say in this game, man. Spoiled our home opener, 42 to 38. So now we got to get into some season goals, man. We need some direction for these Blue Sharks for this year, man. Like I said, high expectations this season, and we really want to make an impact. Given everything that's gone on in the past, man, you already know the story. We got to set the tone, okay? So listen, man, let's get into these season goals, man. Number one, beware of sharks. Now, this is one we had from last year as well. But given that we're in a new conference and we got a whole lot of different things going on, we're still going to have this on our list, man. So we want to finish top three or better in our conference. All right, man. And the next one right here is going to be best serve code. Finish the season ahead of Beaumont University and conference standings. And look, man, if you know the story, if you know what happened, Beaumont University has some of our ex players, ex coaches, and being ahead of them in the standings is a big deal. So that's number two on our list. Number three, glass half full. We want to finish with a record of 500 or better on the season. This is something I feel like we can definitely accomplish. Maybe some low hanging fruit, but hey, we want to check some of these boxes off. We got to, you know, hey, some of them might be easy for us, but might not be easy for other teams. So anyway, man, moving on. The next one we got is on the map. So this is going to be another goal that we've seen before, but basically we want to finish in the top 25 in the nation. Self-explanatory right there. Next up, we got King of the Conference. Like I said, we're in a brand new conference this year and we are trying to make a statement. OK, it's so a lot of good teams vying for top position. But at the end of the year, we want that to be us. And then lastly, we got top of the food chain. You already know this is the ultimate goal. We want to win us a natty and hopefully we can do so, man. Feel really good with this roster that we have. And speaking of this roster, we always have opportunity and room for more. So the Blue Sharks recruiting class of 2025 is still open. Spots are still available. But like I said before, man, recruiting is going to work a little bit differently this year. And I explained it in the last video, but I'm going to explain it again. So look, the Sharks actually only have five positions open right now. Fullback, O-lineman, or punter. If you really want to be a part of the program, let me know, man. I want to make sure everybody can play. But in order for you to do that, man, there's going to be a little bit different setup this year. So what we're going to do, man, is you actually have to sub to the channel. And when you do, man, I need you to go ahead and join the channel and become an actual member, man. Once you're a member, you're going to get all types of perks, all types of extras and stuff. And look, like I told you from the beginning, man, this is just about having fun. So if you really want to be involved in this community, if you want to become Sub-Zero fam. Yeah, that's right. Sub-Zero fam. You want to join up and join up now, man. But look, like I said, man, there's a tons of positions open and a lot of positions on the other team. The Black Panthers season will be available. We will have recruits and you can join that way as well. So look, man, we're going to have some fun. Speaking of having some fun right now, the Sharks probably had a little bit too much fun because we are one in one and we need to go ahead and focus up. All right. So as we take a look at the Shark Bay update, man, we can see they're showing us our schedule. And right now, like I said, we're one in one and our student section does not hold anything back. And they're writing about us. They say, is it too early to tell? The Blue Sharks are now one and one after a shocking loss to an unranked UNLV. Which version of the team will we see in week three? OK, trying to rhyme. But anyway, man, look, they said the much awaited season opener for the Blue Sharks did not quite go to plan. The Sharks would manage to lose their home opener in an offensive shootout. And then they go on to ask, has the bar been set too high for the Sharks after a big time win? Will we be able to get back on track? And hey, man, those are some valid questions. So listen, as we get ready for week three, we are going to have to show everybody, even our own campus, what this team is made of. This is going to be a big game for us. Week three versus BYU. It's time to get down to that field. It's the Battle of the Blues. Shark Nation, you know what time it is. It's game time. Yes, sir. It is finally time to get down to the field, man. It feels like we've been waiting months for this moment right here. <clears throat> but anyway, man, the Sharks get set to take the field in their new uniforms, man. Looking really good, man. This team is one and one like we know. This is a big game. Game up in the mountains. Battle of the Blues, BYU. They are no slouch, and they are not a team to sleep on. So here we go, man. As we get the first kickoff of the game underway, it is going to be into the back of the end zone for a touchback. 
And this is where we're going to see our first glimpse of this Shark defense, man, on the road again. We know how they performed against FSU, but what would they do here in this game against a really good BYU team? We're going to find out now as Buchanan drops back, and he's going to find a tight end over to the right-hand side for a first down and then some, who's finally brought down by Jenkins. But right there, BYU is trying to start off fast and hot and get this football down the field in quick fashion. And so here we go. They go no huddle and going to go with a handoff up the middle. And their running back is going to fall for about two yards right there. So now it's second and eight. The Cougars looking really good on this drive so far. Buchanan's looking to the left-hand side for another tight end. He's going to find him and then makes a really good move and gets all the way down to the 38. And they go no huddle yet again. So the Sharks got to do some catching up. Maybe still some leftover attitude or posture from that last game. I don't even know what to say right there. But as we get gassed again for another first down, this time it was on the ground and they have not slowed this tempo down whatsoever. The Sharks have got to try to figure it out or will they burn a timeout just to try to get their stuff in order? As we can see right there, they cannot figure out what's going on in this football game right now and get scored on on the opening drive. And the Cougars made it look rather easy as they are celebrating in the end zone saying they need a little bit more from us. And my goodness, they might be right. So just as we were saying, man, we know this is a really big game for Seattle. There's been a lot of hype. The first game they came out, handled business, beat a top 25 team in FSU. Week after we fall to UNLV. This week, starting this game off, we are not looking so hot, man. And maybe some of the doubters, maybe some of the critics might've been right about this team and that we might be overhyped, but we got to get our own chance. We're going to get our chance on offense as we see Credible is going to take this kick return up to the left-hand side. And he's going to get all the way to the 17 before he's brought down. So that's where Malone and company are going to start with this football and try to answer back to a, a huge BYU first drive. And so here we go. We're going to go single back on the 17. First and 10, five minutes and 40, 54 seconds left to go in this first quarter as we see an end around to Billy Go, who's got a whole lot of speed found the edge and then got a first down right there so that is what you like to see in a response from a blue shark team that you really felt like they had to do something right in this first drive it's got a result in points so anyway here we go man it's a first down on the 29 and we're gonna go with another handoff to tay ray who's fighting his way up the middle breaks two tackles but only gets a yard after all the effort and so here we go man it's now on the 30 and we're going to see a play action here. Malone's going to drop back. He is under pressure, scrambling to his right, has nowhere to go. He's trying to force it. And it's an interception by BYU that's going to get taken all the way down to the 23. And just like that, we said we needed a big response from the Sharks on this drive. And this is not what we wanted. This is not what you want to see from this Seattle Blue Shark team. They throw an interception and it goes all the way down to the 23. So the BYU Cougars are going to start and they're going to find a strike over the middle that ends up in a touchdown a one play touchdown after the turnover epps is now dancing in the end zone yet again and the sharks are looking for answers so here we go man after a quick drive yet again we see the kickoff taken up by crossley but man oh man we really need a response here to go down two scores in that in that quick of fashion it's just not what you want to see, man. And you can see, man, Malone is feeling a little shaken after that interception. And so we're just going to hand it off to Tay Ray, who gets up for only a yard right there. So it's second and nine now as we see Malone drop back to pass again. He's going to find Jackson over the left-hand side. And Jackson has a first down and finally gets pushed out of bounds. And so here we go. Maybe that'll help Malone find some rhythm in this game. Crowd making some noise for BYU, making it tough to call adjustments. Malone's looking across the middle, and he had... An open receiver that just dropped the ball. Too much pressure. Good coverage right there by BYU. So now we're looking at second and 10 where we get a handoff from Tay Ray who's wiggling through the line, finds some space, and gets a good gain of six yards right there on second down. So now we're looking at third and four, and we see some motion. And we're going to see Malone drop back again. He's got a decent pocket. He's looking to the right-hand side. And this time the catch is made and held on to for a first down. So here we go. Ball on the 45. Three minutes and 35 seconds to go in this first quarter. The Sharks looking to try to put some points on the board. Moving the ball relatively good on this drive right here. Looking over the top for Benjamin. But that was well covered by BYU right there. Nothing results to that play. So a second and 10. We're going to go with another handoff to the left-hand side that gets us two yards. 
So here we go. This is a big third and eight right here on the 47. We see Malone drop back yet again. Got a clean pocket. He's got to step up and make a throw and just couldn't get enough air on that thing. Looking for Bates over the middle. And so we're just going to make the smart play and punt this thing away. Get it all the way down to the 23 where this fiery hot Cougar offense takes the field again. As we see them make another pass connection to the left-hand side that results in a first down. A missed tackle right there. Seems to be a consistent theme from these Sharks right now. And so here we go, man. We see another pass right there. This time the Sharks were able to make a play and it is incomplete. So a second and 10. The Cougars are on their own 34 as we see them drop back to pass again. Looking over the right-hand side. And so here we go. Stringing a couple stops together. The Sharks are now... Looking at third and 10, trying to get a stop right here, trying to get this offense the ball back, man. So here we go, third and 10. Buchanan is dropping back to pass, looking over to the right-hand side, and Tim Flowers is going to come down with the interception on the 40, and he's got space. He's got a whole lot of speed. He's got the sideline, but he finally gets brought down at the 38. Big-time play right there from Flowers. He had the receiver in a box, and Buchanan just made a mistake throwing in his direction, man. Flowers comes up with a huge turnover right there, giving the Sharks a shot in the arm, a little bit of life in this game as it was looking bleak. It was looking like BYU might go down for another score, 21-0, but Flowers had something to say about that. And you can see right there, he just dropped back. Honestly, made a terrible read. Flowers was all over him the whole route. And we get the interception and the Sharks go back on offense with a chance to try and put some points on the board in this game. So here we go, man. We're going to see a handoff to Rush on the left-hand side who gets a good gain of six right there on first down. And here we go. The Sharks are trying to speed up the tempo, maybe catch this Cougar defense off guard a little bit. We're still in shotgun. Malone is looking to his right-hand side. We've got a quick screen. It's going to Benjamin. Benjamin's got some speed down the sideline. He's going to get to the 10 and get all the way down to the eight before he is dragged down. And so here we go. This Sharks offense has found some life. They found some rhythm, and they're going to continue with this. Going no huddle yet again. Still in shotgun. Rest to Malone's right. Rest is going to get the handoff, but this time he's going to lose a yard. So it's second and goal now. A minute and 50. Minute 47 seconds left in this first quarter. We're going to see Tay Ray get the handoff this time and doesn't get much. He actually gets back to the eight, so it's third and goal now. We're going to see Malone. Throw this football. He's looking to the right-hand side, and he's going to find Malik Austin in the back of the end zone through two defenders. Touchdown, Sharks. What a throw and catch right there. Malik Austin, who we know was a standout in the All-American game, is making an impact on this Sharks offense so far in the season, man. Another touchdown to add to his name, and what a throw by Moses Malone. What a great drive by the Sharks in general, man. Came down and just marched down the field. Finished this drive off with points. A great adjustment catch. High pointed that football. Came down with it and six points for the Sharks. And we see Zayden up right here finishing the work, finishing the job. And so it's now 7-14. to 14. BYU still up, but the Sharks are feeling a whole lot better. And so here we go, man. We're going to go ahead and get this kick off. Here we go. We're going to see Zayden upright put this thing almost in the back of the end zone. It's going to be another touchback. So here we are, and we see the BYU offense take the field again. They're going to go with a handoff to the right-hand side, but he is met quickly in the backfield and goes nowhere. So now it's going to be second and 10. They're still on the 25. And here we go. Another handoff to the right-hand side. They're trying to... Trying to feed their running back right now, but the Sharks are doing a good job of shutting that down. Short gain of three, making it a long third and seven right here. Here we go. Buchanan's got all types of time. He's going to find a receiver over the middle who takes a big hit, but holds on to the football's first and ten. And we see Buchanan going to the sweet spot right now, attacking that Sharks secondary right over the middle. Yet again, another big time pass, another first down. They've gotten all the way down to the 37. 40 seconds left to go in this first quarter. And BYU is looking like they want to score before the quarter is up. So here we go, man. They're still in shotgun. You're going to see motion from the left to the right-hand side. They're going to go with a reverse to the running back. But he is going nowhere as they get to him before he even gets to the line of scrimmage. And so that right there. Finally, we see the Sharks kind of stand up a little bit and slow this BYU offense down as they're now looking at second and 10. Buchanan set the throw again. He's going to find somebody over the middle again. And it's another first down again. So here we go, man. Clock's ticking down. Final seconds in this first quarter. BYU is going to elect to snap the football again with a quick screen. But this time it's blew up. Tackled in the backfield. And the Sharks take BYU to the second quarter. BYU has the lead 14-7. But right now, BYU does have most of the momentum, man. We can see some of the numbers. And you know what they say about the numbers. They don't lie. And right now, BYU is definitely dominating this game. The Sharks trying to claw their way back into it. We'll see what they can do in this second quarter, man. Hopefully they can get it together. 
take it into halftime with some momentum, maybe even the lead. But they're going to have to leave that up on the field. So here we go, man. Second and 12. Started this second quarter. They're going to go with play action. And he's going to find his receiver yet again. Buchanan is looking like Aaron Rodgers throwing dots all over the field right now. So here we go, man. Take it all the way to the eight-yard line. They're going to go with a handoff to the running back. And he's going to hurdle one tackle. Get all the way down to the two-yard line and finally get pulled back. But, man, that was a great game right there. So on second and goal, you got to imagine they're going to hand off to him again. And they do. And he leaps over the tackle for a touchdown number three. BYU goes up two scores in this game, 21-7. to seven. And, man, oh, man, you really would have loved to see a shark stop right there, but it just didn't happen. So we're going to see just incredible. Try to do something on this kickoff, on this kick return. He gets it down to the 18, and that's where the Sharks are going to start again. And it feels like a constant theme where we're finding ourselves saying the Sharks need to do something big on this drive. And here we go. They go with another end around, and it gets 10 yards right there. This time, that was Imani Bates with showing off some speed right there. And so here we go. The Sharks are going to stay in shotgun, running back to Malone's right. We're going to see motion again, and this time it's going to be a fake the other way. Tay Ray's going to take the handoff to the left-hand side and get a nice chunk right there, gain a nine. And here we go. The Sharks trying to mix it up a little bit and catch the Cougars off guard. And so here we are, second and one. They're going to do the same thing again, but this time he's going to drop back and pass. He's looking for a receiver. He's going to find Jackson over the top, and Jackson comes down with it. All the way down to the 33 some deception right there definitely did exactly what they thought they were going to do and caught the Cougars off guard for a big game. So after that big play, man, can the Sharks capitalize on this drive? We see Malone under pressure. He's not going to be able to escape. And that is a loss of nine right there. So a second and 19. And here we are, man. And it looks like we're going to go with a handoff to Rush. He's going to find some room up the middle and gets a whole lot of what was lost back. So now it's third and 11. Not necessarily manageable, but Malone can make this type of play. What will the Sharks do with it? This seems like a pivotal down right here early in this game. So here we go. Malone's going to drop back the pass. Looking left. He's going to find Goat just past the sticks. A nice comeback route right there. And this is a good sighting to see Goat getting into this, some action in this game. Expecting big things out of him this year as we see Malone dropping back the pass again. Looking over the corner to the right-hand side. And he's going to find Austin in the end zone again. Touchdown number two to that young man's name. And he is looking to be a factor in this offense. We told you, man, he was highly touted coming out of that All-American game. We knew he had potential. He's got great hands, good speed. But man, oh, man, we did not know he was like that. Excuse me, Mr. Austin. I was not familiar with your game. Touchdown number two. Sharks go on the board on this drive. If we can convert the extra point, it's going to be a 14-21 to 21 game. And that we do. And it is 21-14. Sharks looking to try and tie this game up, man. But first, they got to stop this hot BYU offense. But look, momentum is creeping back to the Sharks' side. Seattle trying to get back in this game. And here we are. We've got ourselves a close game with just under five minutes before halftime. So here we go. What will we see next? This time, the kick return is going to be taken. It's going to go to the right-hand side, and he is going to get brought down at the 13. So the Sharks start off on defense with good field position. What will Bohannon do with it? He's got this offense and he's throwing the ball with a whole lot of confidence, a whole lot of precision as we see him do it yet again to another receiver in this Cougar offense, man. States was right there. He took a risk trying to make a play on the ball, just couldn't quite get there and gave up a big play. So it's now first and 10 ball on the 37. The clock's still running down. Four minutes left to go in the second quarter. And we see Bo Hannon drop back to pass again. He's looking quick to his left. He's going to find his receiver yet again on that quick pass play. Parker Kingston having a really good game against the Sharks defense right now, and so is Bo Hannon. Dang, they're making a case for the Heisman. Is he out there, number three? But here we go. Speaking of three, it's second and three. They go with a jet sweep to the hot receiver, but he doesn't go anywhere. Only picks up one, so it's third and two. This is a big play right here. Can the Sharks finally get a stop? We've seen them get a turnover, but can they buckle down and get a third and two stop? As we see another jet sweep, but this time Kingston is able to wiggle his way past the sticks. First down Cougars. And for what it's worth, the Sharks do show flashes of greatness on defense from time to time, but they just cannot get the consistent stops. As we see another jet sweep go for about seven right there. But it does look like we have an injury after that play. And so here we go, man. They actually only pick up four. So a second and six, ball on the 45. Sharks trying to put a stop together. BYU trying to go back down and score again as they find Kingston on the left-hand side. That quick screen has killed the Sharks all game so far. They've got to make an adjustment as we see 
The receiver in motion again. They go with the jet sweep again. And this time, Kingston has got too much space. Gets all the way down to the 10, but then he fumbles. But then he recovers his own fumble. Man, what a play right there. Just as we were saying, the consistency from the defense, the one thing we have seen is consistency from this Cougars offense, and they keep running the same play, but they get the same result as this time. Kingston's going to strut into the end zone untouched. The fourth jet sweep of this drive, but they were not worried about it as they score and go up 28-14, man. This Sharks defense has just got to do better. It's plain and simple. we got to do better. As we see, Credible is going to take this kickoff to the 14. Speaking of doing better, 14 is not good enough. Just take the knee, man. But anyway, man, Sharks are going to go back on offense. We need something out of this drive right here. Down two scores late in the quarter before halftime, man. As we see Tay Ray getting busy, cutting up the middle, and getting a nice gain of about 12 right there. And that's a good thing to see, man. Tay Ray has been kind of quiet. So far this year, man, we really know his we know his body of work. We know what he can do. Maybe you want to get him more involved. But speaking of getting involved, this guy right here, Bates, gets involved with a huge catch. And we know he is a speedster, small in stature, but, man, he can fly. And so here we go, man. We see the freshman has just eclipsed 1,000 yards on the season, which is a good sign, man. He's right on track. He's doing what we thought he would do. But we just want to see him spring, string some of these drives together and result in points. I don't care about how many yards you throw. I care about how many games you win. So anyway, man, that is a good play. Not to take nothing away from the young man, but here we go. Moses Malone and company driving down the field on the 47. Just over two minutes left to go before halftime. And here we are. We see Malone drop back to pass again. He's dropping back deep. He's going to go to the running back. He's going to make a good move. Tay Ray yet again fighting for more yards. Picks up five right there. And that's going to take us to the two-minute timeout. And here we go, man. Sharks on the 48. Going to go quick screen. Tay Ray's got a whole lot of space. He's going to cut back up the middle. Going to the outside. Gets to the 40. A nice game right there. First down. Moves the sticks. And the Sharks get closer and closer to that end zone. So here we go, man. Moses Malone dropping back to pass again. Had all types of time. He's going to find Bates again at the 20 and so this is what we wanted to see from the jump man sharks are putting together play after play and this is what we love to see so here we go man a minute 38 left to go before halftime the sharks marching down the field ball on the 20 and here we go malone making some adjustments at the line didn't like what he saw initially so he's gonna drop back the pass he's gonna find austin austin's using some speed try to get around that outside but decided to cut up and get as much as he could which was five right there. So we're looking at second and five as we see another screen. Tay Ray's got space. Tay Ray makes a move and he gets all the way down to the three. Showing some shiftiness right there. Put a man on the dirt. Can he cap off this nice drive with a touchdown as he muscles his way into the end zone for a Sharks touchdown? And they get closer and closer to evening this game up just like we wanted to see, man. Uh, excellent drive right there by the Sharks. All facets of that offense were on fire. The run game, the pass game, alone looking surgical. Here we go, man. 20 to 28, and we see Zayden upright lining up this extra kick, and we know he's good money. It's 21-28, a minute and eight seconds left to go before halftime. Can the Sharks get a much-needed stop and just prevent points on this last drive? So here we go. We see Bohannon drop back in shotgun. Got tons of time, but ran out quickly as we saw hood right there almost getting to him so he just decided to throw it away so here we are at a minute even second and 10 ball on the 13 as we see Bohannon drop back again he's under pressure he's gonna score out to his right he's gonna find his receiver who's got tons of space and lots of run after the catch and gets all the way down to the 40 man and I'm not sure what happened maybe some blown coverage or just he's extended the play but he was wide open right there as he finds yet another receiver to his right for a gain of eight right there and he is just dotting us up right now need to get some pressure on this quarterback try and knock his rhythm off but speaking of rhythm he is just in the zone right now as he finds another receiver over that middle getting them closer to another halftime capping score the sharks really don't want to see that i'll be honest with you but right now ball on the 25 30 seconds left to go what's going to happen here will bo hannon Put the cherry on top of this drive as we see him drop back again. And once again, same story right over the middle. First down. So here we go. The Sharks have got to get it together, man. I'm not sure what's going on. Linebackers need to tighten up or something as we see them going over the top again. But this time it's intercepted. King tried it with the late pick in the corner of the end zone, shutting down the hopes of a BYU score right before halftime. And my goodness talk about a timely play 
our cornerbacks right now have made two of them, both of them freshmen. King Triton right there. We already know he is locked down as locked down gets. Second mistake of the day from Bo Hannon throwing to these dangerous DBs. I give it to him. He's had a good game so far, but that right there is going to cost you. So anyway, man, the Sharks have a chance. 15 seconds on the clock, three timeouts. We see Malone drop back, looking to his right for Benjamin, who he had wide open, but Benjamin just could not hold on to the catch after the hit. And so they're still on the 20. 10 seconds left to go. Going quick screen. We've seen Billy go break one tackle. Trying to make a big play right there. And I think Coach Hughes is just going to just gonna take what we can get right here and go into halftime. 21 to 28. This right here seems like it could be another shootout. The Sharks defense has struggled a lot. I mean, the BYU offense has been on fire. Dang near unstoppable. Minus the two picks. But we're looking at, at the numbers right here, the passing yards, and they're definitely ahead of us in that category. We absolutely have not been able to stop this BYU offense, man. But the Sharks have stuck around, and that's the one thing that you don't want to do. This is a dangerous Shark team, dangerous Seattle team. If you let us stick around in the game, we will find a way to win. But we'll see what happens in this second half, man. Really excited to get to the action. So here we go. Without any further delay, man, let's get to the second half and see what these Blue Sharks are going to be able to do. Down seven and looking to try to tie the game. So here we go, man. We see Keon Cross. He's going to take the kickoff up the middle. Gets a decent amount before he's dragged down. Gets all the way down to the 17. Like I said before, maybe we want to start just letting these kicks go out of bounds instead of starting at the 15 and the 17. But anyway, man, we'll take what we can get. Malone in shotgun again. First down. And here we go. What can the Sharks do in this second half? As we see a handoff go to Tay Ray for a decent gain of three right there. So trying to set the tone, trying to set the tone on the offensive line. That's one thing we really want to see is just get Malone some more time and let this happen a lot more often as we see Austin almost get loose. But he does get a first down right there. And so here we go. Ball on the 39. As we see Bates go in motion, he's going to take the jet sweep to the right-hand side. He has some speed. But he just couldn't get away from the linebacker right there. Only picking up three. And so a second and seven. Ball on the 42. Malone trying to make some adjustments at the line. And here we go. We see Russ get the handoff for a short game right there. And so here we go. This is a big third down. Empty formation. Malone's going to drop back. He's got a good pocket. He's going to find Bates on the right-hand side. And Bates barely gets to the sticks. They give him the first down. And that right there is just a display of how fast this kid is really dangerous man but anyway man that's a first down great play right there five minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this third quarter man ball on the 50 exactly and we see another handoff go to tay ray who's running with some power right there breaking the tackle good eight yard gain second and two and why not go right back to him but fool me they go with a play action and as he's getting hit malone was looking for base over the middle good throw right there just couldn't come down with the catch so that leaves the sharks with a third and two. Seems like it should be manageable, but I've seen crazier things happen. So anyway, nothing's a guarantee. So here we go. Malone trying to call some shots at the line. Didn't like what he saw at first, so he's going to audible. He's looking for Jackson on the left-hand side. Jackson's got it. Jackson's got room. He's got speed, and he gets down to the 20. So that right there was all Malone right there. Called the play. Called the audible at the line of scrimmage, man. Great adjustment. He got his tight end open. Jackson made the catch and made a play. First down, Sharks. Ball on the 20. Sharks knocking on that door. Here we go. Malone still in the shotgun. He's going to hand off to Tay Ray, who finds some room on the left-hand side and gets a nice gain of six right there. So Ray is going to stay in this game, still in the backfield to Malone's right. Malone reading the defense and making adjustments again. Second and four. He's going to take the ball and shotgun. Throw right over the middle to Austin. Austin's going to get the first down. Get brought down at the eight. So it's first and goal. And Malone is feeling it right now. He's found a good rhythm and is dicing this Cougar defense up. Will he do it again on first and goal? He's drifting off to his right-hand side. He's got to just go. He's got, he might run for it. He goes, and he gets only two as he runs out of bounds. But you can see he's feeling really good. Showed a little bit of pep in his step right there. We know the big man can move around a little bit. And so here we go, man. Second and goal, ball on the six. The Sharks knocking on the door, trying to get in that end zone and tie this game up. As we see, they're going to go with a read option, and Malone's going to keep it. He's going to try and go up the middle. Only gets two right there. Takes a big hit as well. Want to be careful of that. So on third and goal, we are going to see the Sharks drop back to pass. Malone is under fire. And he throws to the back of the end zone, but is not able to get it. So it's going to be fourth and goal. BYU makes a huge stand on the goal line. 
And this is a big call right here for Coach Hughes. Will the Sharks go for this or will we settle for the points? And we're going to put our trust in our new kicker, man, Zayden, upright to get the chip shot, but he misses. He misses the chip shot, and we turn the ball over. And I, I got to be honest with you, I, I thought that was in the bag, but he misses wide right. The normally reliable kicker right there sets the Sharks back after a really nice drive. Didn't result in points, but we felt like we would at least get the field goal, and it's missed. So the Cougars are going to start with this ball on the 20. And they're going to go with the screen off to the left. That was a done most of this game. But this time it's going to be he's going to get chopped down and only pick up three right there. So the Sharks are right back on defense. Disappointing into that last drive, but got to keep playing. So anyway, we see another jet sweep to Kingston. And he's had himself quite the game just on the jet sweep alone. We still haven't figured out how to stop that. Another Cougar first down as we see them continue to run the ball for another gain of 10. Getting all the way down to the 50 right now and quite frankly, embarrassing this Sharks defense. I mean, my goodness, once again to the right hand side, to the outside, gets a gain of nine. Thankfully, he gets pushed out of bounds by Jenkins. But man, we've got to figure something out on defense as we are getting dotted up yet again. Getting all the way down to the 29. Bohan is seemingly doing whatever he wants to our defense right now. As we see him drive back again and find another receiver for another first down. I sound like a broken record, but imagine what it's like for that Sharks defense. Oh, my goodness. Bohan is dropping back to pass again over the middle. This time, there is a flag on the field, and we wait to hear the call, and it is going to be holding. So the Sharks right there catch a massive break, finally get moving the sticks backwards on this penalty right there. So we're going to see them go with a quick screen on the right-hand side. And the Sharks were all over that one right there, keeping it to a one-yard gain. Second and 19. We see a handoff to the right side. Who's This guy right here has just been a definite workhorse. As you can see, that is one of his abilities. And he's showing it right now, man. So on third and 13, they're going to go with a wide receiver screen to the middle, and they almost get the first down after some nice nifty moves right there. But the Sharks are able to get them down. Fourth and six. They're going to settle for three. The kick is up and the kick is good. A feeling the Sharks don't know right now because our kicker can't make a kick. But anyway, they are going to extend their lead by three. So the score is now 21-31. The Sharks have got to, they've got to do something. They've got to do something quick as we see Credible, who is pretty quick himself, get all the way down to the 22. But now we turn our attention to the Sharks quarterback, Malone, once again, as he's going to hand off to Rush on the left-hand side, who finds a crease. And finds himself with a handful of yards right there. Good run right there. Getting the first down and getting the Sharks all the way down to the 34. And we go play action. Trying to catch the Cougars off guard. But that right there was just a bad throw. Threw in triple coverage to Goat. And although he is a great playmaker, I don't know if he was going to ever make that catch. As we get a minimal gain of one right there on second down from Rush. And so we're looking at third and nine. Over the middle, we're going to find Jackson who makes a huge play. And he has been one of Malone's favorite targets thus far throughout the season. Comes up with another big-time catch. First down, getting the Sharks all the way down to the 39 as we see the jet sweep to the speedy base who's going to try to find the edge. He's going to find the corner and is going to get all the way to the 29, getting the Sharks another first down. The Sharks right now are rolling and trying to cap off this drive with six. But right there, they get stalled. The drive stalls out a little bit as we lose a yard right there. So a second and 11 as we see Malone drop back the pass again. Looking over the top to Goat. And Goat is going to come down with the catch. And it should be a touchdown. We got a flag on the field. Let's see what it is. It's going to be rough in the pass. So this touchdown is going to stand. And the Sharks are going to score late in this third quarter. This is exactly what we needed. And right on time, we get a Billy Goat sighting streaking down the left-hand side of the field. I mean, if it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup with that kid, you might as well count your chickens because that's six. So anyway, man, the Sharks go down the field and score. 28-31 is the score going into the fourth quarter. Only 30 seconds left as we get a kick return from 17 who gets his... <laughs> he got himself handed to himself, if you know what I mean. But my gosh, here we go, man. The BYU offense is back on the field, and they are looking to keep dotting us up through the pass game. Bohannon probably having a game of his life right now. Here we go, second and four. 15 seconds left to go in the third. Right over the middle again is Kingston. And that's good enough for a first down, getting them to the 26. Five seconds left in this third quarter, almost getting to the fourth. They elect to go with a snap and run one more play to their hot receiver, Kingston, who breaks a tackle. 
but is finally dragged down at the 33, just short of the sticks. But that does take us into the fourth quarter, and we got ourselves a good game. The score is 28 to 31. Right now, BYU Cougars are up at home. Bohannon having a game of his life, 400, nearly 400 yards going into the fourth, but we got ourselves a good quarterback as well in Malone, who has kept us in this game and kept it close. So here we go. We are looking for a stop right here. And that right there was a dangerous throw from Bohannon. Once again, we've seen him make those mistakes before. Got away with one right there. So it's third and two. This is a huge play. Would have loved to see us come down with a pick. That would have been six for sure. But we got to make a big play right here on third and two. And they're going to go with a handoff to the left-hand side, which he gets the first down and a little bit more. Keeping this BYU drive alive and keeping that lead intact. So Bohannon and Shotgun's going to drive back again. Looking over the middle as he's done all day. And he's got his receiver. And he found six. A back-breaking touchdown play from the Cougars. We've said this Sharks defense, for whatever reason, has struggled so much over the middle of the field. And BYU, time and time again, Bohannon, time and time again, has taken advantage of that, as he did right there. Getting that lead right back up to 10. The Sharks thought we had a pretty good chance, man. But with that last touchdown, the Sharks win is getting more and more difficult to obtain. But we still got time on the clock, and that's all we need. So here we go, man. Malone's going to drop back the pass. It's going to be a quick screen. And the blocking was just, I know it's a screen, but you got to at least chip him. Malone had no time right there and just had to throw it in the dirt. So on second and 10, we see him drop back the pass. And this time, just can't connect with his receiver. And that is going to result in a third and 10. We do not want a three and out right here. So Malone's dropping back the pass. Looking over the middle, he's going to find Hummel. And Hummel comes away with a huge catch. The speedy Hummel comes up with a timely third down conversion, and man, oh, man, was that needed. And we got to go hurry up here. We see Malone try to get the guys back to the line. We're going to go with a snap out of shotgun again, looking over the top. Austin's got a step. Austin's got the ball. Austin breaks a tackle, and Austin has got that football into the end zone. Touchdown, Sharks. Malik Austin, touchdown number three. This kid is really like that. Dance, young man, dance. My goodness, touchdown number three in this game. And this is exactly what the Sharks needed to score quickly. Malik Osman, the freshman, he is he is definitely making a statement in this game. We knew we needed to find an offensive weapon for the Sharks offense after some of the players we lost, some of the talent we lost. But he is stepping up big time in this game and putting his name in the hat for receiver number one. So after that big time play, man, the Sharks inch closer to trying to take the lead in this game. Just can't quite get there yet. Three-point lead, BYU is getting ready to get the ball. This kickoff is going to go in the back of the end zone. And Kingston's just going to take a knee. And this right here, what we've been asking for all game. Can this Sharks defense step up and get a stop and get the ball back in the hands of their dangerous offense? Here we go, man. Ball on the 25. Six minutes and five seconds left to go in this tightly contested game. Here we go, man. You got to imagine they're going to try to milk their clock right here as they go with a run. But the dangerous linebacker, Beaumont, was all over that. So second and nine, the clock is running down. Bohan is going to drop back to pass again. He's looking left. He's had much success on that left-hand side all game. He's going to find his receiver. So it's third and four. Ball on the 31. And they're going to go with a shotgun. He's going to drop back to pass. He's had a whole lot of time. But this time, he finally runs out. And Max Matrix blew that play right up. He gets the sack, but he does sustain an injury possible shoulder injury we don't know i don't want to speculate but what a big play right there for Matrix. i hope he's okay man the much needed stop right there the sharks finally get one and it does look like byu is going to go ahead and punt this ball to flowers we know he's got some speed what is he going to be able to do with it he's going to get to the left hand side he's trying to get the corner he gets the corner and he's going to get all the way down to the 42 and give the Sharks great field position. So just when you thought this Sharks team might have been out of it, I told you, we kept it close. And now it's time for Malone to prove what he's all about. As we see Russ get a nice run up the middle. He gets tripped up by the ref. Gets tripped up by the ref. And I'm telling you, if he didn't, he might have been dancing in the end zone. But he gets all the way down to the 24, man. Great play right there by Rush. Five minutes left to go in this game. Ball on the 24. Malone's going to drop back to pass again. He's looking over the left-hand side to go, but didn't put enough air on it and almost made a huge mistake late in this game. Thankfully, that was just batted down. So here we go. Second and 10. We're going with another handoff to Ray, who's running hard and gets all the way for a gain of five right there. So it's third and five. And this is another big play right here. We 
don't know if we can rely on our kicker, Zayden Upright, who missed a chip shot earlier in this game, man. So we really want to try to convert right here. And we go with a quick screen off to the left-hand side. Imani Bates has got it with a whole lot of speed. He's a spin move, and he gets all the way down to the four. What a play from the freshman. And correction, Christian Bates, not Imani. I don't know where that came from, but Bates right now is balling out of his mind. As we see a handoff to Tay Ray, who's going to break one tackle and try to get into the end zone, but gets cracked. So the ball is going to end up on the four-yard line. The Sharks are knocking right at the door. They can smell blood in the water. Can they cap off this drive with six? As we see, Tay Ray is going to hurdle a man and fumble the ball. On the three-yard line, Tay Ray fumbles, trying to be Superman, trying to do too much. All he really needed to do was just put his head down, keep his shoulders square, and keep his legs turning, but he decided to hurdle. Got flipped midair and fumbles the football, and BYU recovers on the three-yard line. That is what the Sharks cannot afford. All momentum goes right back to the Cougars, and we've got to see what they're going to do with it. But right there, it could be a gift and a curse. Big time T country comes away with a tackle for a loss on that play. So it is now second and 12, and they are on their own one-yard line. Can the Sharks make the impossible happen? Can we get a safety right here? As we see, the running back's going to go up the middle. Gets cracked, but he does pick up a couple yards, giving them a little bit of room to breathe. So third and nine. Big third down right here. Ball on the four. Not gonna, imagine they're going to do too much, and they actually get tackled in the backfield again. Fourth and 12. T Country coming up with two big-time plays right there. Big-time plays for Big Country. It just makes sense. So here we go. They're going to punt this ball in their own end zone. Fourth and 12 on the two-yard line. We don't get the block, but we do got Flowers back in the backfield. You know he's fast. What can he do with it? He's going to get to the 40s. He's going to try to find space on the right-hand side, but gets brought down at the 41. And the Sharks get a second chance. An excellent stand right there by the defense. Something switched right there. They made some big-time plays. And the Sharks get the football back late in this game. Here we go. Can Malone lead this team to victory on this last drive? Play clock winding down, three seconds left. He gets the snap off. He finds Jackson over the middle. Jackson, shorthanded, tight end, comes down with the catch, and that's a gain of three. And so here we go. Could this be the final drive of the game? Will the Sharks finally score on a good drive? We know we had the big plays. We know we had the exciting deep throw home run balls but can we work our way down the field and score while we're in the red zone we seem to have struggled with that all game so here we have it malone is making some adjustments at the line he's going to motion his man from left to the right he drops back to pass he's got the blitz coming he's just going to dump it off to this running back rush who's found some space around the corner and is going to get all the way down to the 16 a nice play right there quick read from the freshman saw the blitz was coming and just threw right into the blitz first down so here we go, man. It's two minutes and 40 seconds left to go. As we see Malone drop back again, he's under pressure. Running out of time. He's got to get rid of it. Barely gets the throw away. Still second and 10. Ball on the 16. And this right here is what we were just saying. It seems to be where the Sharks struggle the most. Inside the red zone. They've got to be able to capitalize. As we see Malone is just going to take off to the right-hand side. He's got nowhere to go. He's got to get rid of it. He's going to actually decide to scramble and get brought down at the 13. He does get out of bounds. But, man, there was just nothing there. He tried to get as much as he could out of it. Gets brought down. Don't want too many hits on our quarterback like that. An injury to that guy right there would be devastating. But anyway, we don't even want to say nothing like that. It's third and seven, and this is when we got to convert. So here we go. In the hands of Malone. Malone's under pressure. Malone's going over the middle, and he's going to find his big tight end. 7-11 Jackson always open, and the Sharks take the lead late in this game. I told you, you don't want to count this team out. They are dangerous. You let them hang around all game. You get to the fourth quarter, we make a mistake, but they bounce right back, and the Sharks have now taken the lead late in this fourth quarter and turned this ball game around. Behind the arm of Malone, I got to say he's been, he's been consistent. He's been making big-time plays, big-time throws. We doubted him about scoring in the red zone, but this time he is proving us wrong. And you can see, man, he is at 455 yards in this game, and we needed every single one of them. The extra point is good, and we now have ourselves the lead. It's 42 to 38 on the road, man, in this raucous BYU crowd. And here we have it, man. It's going to be kicked into the back of the end zone yet again. And we are going to put this Sharks defense back on the field. Can we make a play? So here we go. They're going to look for a receiver over the left-hand side who was wide open but just couldn't make the connection. So can we get some more pressure on this quarterback and throw him off his rhythm? Second and 10, he drops back to pass. Looking over the top, he's going to find his receiver on the 44. 
And right now, it is just looking like a battle of the quarterbacks, man. Bohannon and Malone just throwing the football all over the field. But we need a stop right here. We get a stop right here. We might call ball game. So here we go. Over the middle again. He's going to find Kingston, who slips a tackle and gets brought down at the 47. Coming up on that two-minute mark in the fourth quarter, man. We'll see if they get another playoff. They don't. So we're going to go into the two-minute warning with the lead. 42-38, the ball on the 47. BYU trying to take the lead back. As we see, almost picked off. Very, very dangerous throw from Bohannon. They try to go with that quick throw to the left, but we were all over that. So now it's third and two. They're going to go with a play action. Looking on to the right-hand side, and it is not there. But guess who is? LB States. Shut them down. And now they're looking to try to convert on fourth down, fourth and two. This is a big play. He was met in the backfield, but he kept his wheels turning and drug Beaumont across the sticks for a first down. Big play right there. And now here we have first and ten. He's going to look for his receiver on the left-hand side and find him again all the way down to the 20. So I hadn't heard, heard of this young man before, Bohannon, but I tip my hat to you, young man. You're doing your thing. And he does it again on a quick receiver screen, getting all the way down to the 12. So right now, the Sharks defense is just looking gas. Not sure what to do. They have up the tempo on us going. No huddle looking for another receiver. But this time, Jenkins was all over that one. And we are now looking at third and two. And this is what separates the boys from the men. It just shows you what this team is made of. And he's going to find his receiver. Yet again over the middle, getting all the way down to the one. And here we go, man. Only a minute left to go in this fourth quarter. The Sharks looking to try to make a stop. A field goal does BYU no good in this situation. So that you know they will be going forward on fourth down. So we got we to gotta buckle up. And here we go. Well, they're going to go with a handoff to left-hand side and made it look all too easy. BYU takes the lead late in this fourth quarter. And, man, this game has been such an emotional roller coaster. The Cougars take the lead with a minute and eight seconds left to go in this game. They are now up three, and the Sharks have to respond. Here we go, man. Credible is going to take this kickoff to the left-hand side. Try to spin back inside, but doesn't quite get the move off. And so the Sharks are going to start with the ball on the 16. Malone by himself in the backfield as he drops back to pass. He's got some time. He's looking for Jackson over the left-hand side. Jackson's got it. Breaks a tackle. Stepped out of bounds, but he did get the first down. Malone in shotgun with the weight of the game on his shoulders. He's drops back to pass. He's looking down the right-hand side, and Benjamin's got a step. Benjamin makes the catch at the 30 and gets tripped up at the 24. That almost did it right there. Benjamin with one-on-one -on -one coverage. He won his matchup and caught the ball in one play. The Sharks get all the way down to the 24 with a full complement of timeouts. And the clock is under a minute right now, 53 seconds. Huge play right there. From the freshman quarterback to the freshman receiver, man. And this game has been a good one. What will we see here late in this fourth quarter as we see Malone take off up the middle? He's going to slide down before he takes a hit. Gets the first down, but I think this one's coming back. And it is. It's going to be a holding on the Sharks. A nice play right there. Orlando Matthews gets hit with the holding call. So now it's going to be first and 20. 40 seconds left to go. We go quick screen with base to the right. To the left, excuse me. He's going to get tackled. Didn't pick up much right there and gets tackled out of bounds. So here we go, man. It's 38 seconds left to go in this game. Second and 15, we see Malone drop back again. They go with a quick screen to the right-hand side. Tay Ray's got some space. Tay Ray is trying to get to the sticks. He can't, but he does get out of bounds. It's third and two, and this is what we play for. This is why we tune in every week. Third and two. 30 seconds left to go. Malone with the ball in his hands. He goes to his trusty tight end. Jackson and Jackson is in the end zone yet again. Touchdown Sharks. They have the lead with under 30 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. And I told you about counting them Sharks out, boy. The Sharks are up in this game. And just when you thought we might be out of it, BYU came down, had a great drive, scored with ease almost. And the Sharks just seemingly were just not able to find the step to just get up and get over top of this game. But I'll tell you this much. Our quarterback is like that. He put this team on his shoulders. He put this team on his back. And he said, listen, I'm going to go get us this touchdown. Just make sure you're there with me. And Jackson was right there, right on time. I told you 7-11 Jackson is always open as he was right there. Man, the Sharks are up in this game. Just 27 seconds left to go in this game. Anything can happen. We already know this. Can the Sharks pull this away game victory off? 
We've got to do everything we can to keep them out of the end zone. And that is going to be it. That's a pick right there from Jamal Carter. And he is going to go down at the 29 and go down with the Sharks win in his hand. That is Sharks football. BYU dominated much of this game, but we did not give up. Seattle is a team that will never give up. What a play from the linebacker, Carter, and sealed the Sharks' victory on the road. A lot of writers, even, even people from our own campus, the Shark Bay Update, they were asking, what type of team is this Seattle team? What do we expect to see? What kind of season are we looking at? It was a lot of naysayers. It was a lot of questions. It was a lot of doubt. But one thing you can never do is count this team out. Bars. Listen, man, Seattle goes on the road. A raucous crowd against a really good BYU team. Battle of the Blues. We walk out with the victory. 549 passing yards, six touchdowns from the freshman. I mean, absolutely outstanding numbers. But we also saw a really big game. Standout receiver Malik Austin. He had a phenomenal game. Got a shout out 7-Eleven Jackson, man, the whole team. Listen, defense didn't have the best game in the world, but we came, out, we came out with turnovers in timely fashion, man. When we needed to stop, we got to stop. And they ultimately, man, we got the win. You can't be mad at that. The Sharks walk away victorious. So look, man, the Sharks walk away with a dub, man, put another win in the win column and hopefully quieting down some of the doubters. But listen, man, that is going to do it for this week's episode. And look, if you did enjoy the video, man, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to the channel today. And remember, a little bit every day goes a long way. So once you take that first step, don't look back. I might see three, 3,000 to be exact. I hope I see you guys in the next one. And if I don't, we well then go ahead and run this one back.